Hey, what's up guys? Pablo here with another video and today we have the unboxing and first impressions on the Logitech MX keys. To start off, the MX Keys keyboard was announced by Logitech back in September 2019. The keyboard was announced and released alongside the MX Master 3 mouse, which I am planning on getting, just not quite yet though. Back to the MX Keys though, this keyboard retails for 100 US dollars. And Logitech offers a palm rest, or they call it a palm rest, a wrist rest, that you can get for an additional 20 US dollars. We'll talk later about the actual palm rest and what it consists of, but if it's a flagship level keyboard, it would have been nice to actually have that included and not have to worry about purchasing something extra. The MX Keys by Logitech comes in two color variations. The one that I have is their black version of the keyboard, which is also the original color from when it was announced last year. The other color option for the keyboard is the space gray version of it, which Logitech made with Apple computers in mind. The main finish on that color option for the keyboard is meant to be more aesthetically pleasing when pairing it up with a space gray Apple computer or other space gray accessories from Apple. I personally have a space gray MacBook Pro, but it's usually hiding under the desk anyway, so me getting the space gray wouldn't really match it because it's not next to the computer. And I simply prefer a more monotone look, which is what I get with the black color of the keyboard, versus on the space gray it has the two tones with the main body being space gray, and the keys being black, just like the one I have. The very first thing that I noticed when first opening and grabbing the box of the keyboard is that this is a heavier keyboard when compared to others. Or in my case, when comparing it to the Magic Keyboard by Apple, which I was using previously, and it's a lot lighter than the MX keys. And according to Logitech, the weight of the keyboard is 28.57 ounces, or about 1.8 pounds, and or 810 grams. And because of the weight, I thought that Logitech used heavier materials, but the body is actually just made of plastic with a brush aluminum finish. The packaging and the overall unboxing experience was pretty great though. There's like multiple layers to unboxing this keyboard, taking it out, and then you have the uh, USB adapter, the unifying USB adapter, which comes in a smaller box, which also includes the USB to USB-C cable. It's a very neat experience, and it's one of a flagship or high-end product like this keyboard is meant to be. The palm rest, however, was a different story. That one was very, very basic. You just rip the tape up, take out the palm rest, there's a piece of paperwork, and that's really about it for that. And now diving a little bit more into the MX keys itself, this is a full-size scissor switch keyboard, which includes a numeric keypad on one end of the keyboard and then a set of function keys at the top. The keyboard features what Logitech refers to as perfect stroke keys, and these are spherically dish keys and are meant to match the shape of your fingers or the shape of the tip of your fingers. There is also a light matte coating on them that makes the keys a lot smoother and easier to glide from one another. I am personally a really, really big fan of this finish and the way that it feels when typing. Even though it has the, the spherical shape on the key itself, the coating just adds a little bit more to that. And Logitech added the shape and the coating to the keys in order to provide you as a user with better feedback whenever you press on the key. And also related to the keys, the keyboard features smart illumination with hand proximity sensors. The feature turns on the backlight on the keyboard the moment your hands and or fingers come within close proximity to the sensors. But then also the backlight is turned off a couple seconds after you put your hands away. And Logitech added this feature with saving power in mind and increasing that battery life for the keyboard. However, something that I have noticed while using the keyboard is that at night usually I'm turning on the backlight and I'm typing and I'm writing the videos or I'm doing homework and the sensors work just like they're supposed to. So if I take my hands away, the, sen the light turns off. If I put my hands up off the keyboard and start typing, the lights turn on. But when I come back the following day after not using the keyboard for a, a couple hours, when I try or when I start typing, the lights don't turn on. Now the backlight system within the keyboard also senses the lighting within the environment that it's on. And I usually have at least this light behind me turned on, which I'm assuming is what causes it to not uh, turn on the backlight automatically. So I have to manually go and turn it on because it's probably sensing that my light is on, so I don't specifically need the backlit keyboard at that moment. And actually going off of that, you are able to manually increase or decrease the amount of backlight that you want 
on the keyboard. The one thing to remember, however, and Logitech did this with uh, saving power and battery in mind as well, if the battery in the keyboard reaches 10% or lower, the backlight will be completely shut off until it's charging or you are fully charged or above 10%. The MX keys is also Logitech Flow Enable. This feature allows for you to move across computers and or operating systems seamlessly. The operating systems portion of that is partly possible because the keyboard features Mac specific keys like the command modifier key. And notice that I said partly on that previous statement primarily because you also need or primarily need the Logitech options program in order to reach full connectivity between computers or operating systems. Now based on trying the program out a little bit and doing obviously some research, this feature is more convenient if you have a Logitech Options mouse combined with the keyboard. But I find this to be a very, very neat feature, especially for me since I have two computers running on my setup. But even without Logitech Options or a mouse that's Logitech Options enabled, the keyboard is great for multi-device use. You can connect the MX keys to up to three devices and that could be all three via Bluetooth or two via Bluetooth and one via the USB unifying receiver. And setting up the Bluetooth connection was rather simple. It's just like setting up any Bluetooth device like headphones or speakers. But if you're not as clueless and or impatient as me, you would have noticed that in the small box where the adapter and the charging cord um, come in, it tells you at the top to go visit a certain Logitech website so it can guide you on the setup. But if you want to do it just like me and not follow the instructions, then when you first turn on the keyboard, the backlight illumination starts a pulsating pattern. The EC switch button level 1 also starts blinking, letting you know the keyboard is in pairing mode. Then I went to my max Bluetooth settings and I found the MX keys listed there. And when I pressed on it, I had to pair it by pressing a specific number given to me on the screen. And then after that, my Mac mentioned that the keyboard was not identified and had to go through a small process for the OS to actually recognize it. The keyboard and the key kept lighting up until I successfully connected to the computer. You can easily switch between three devices using the EC switch uh, keys or buttons that are located in the top row left to the numeric keypad. When I first set up the two computers, uh, the MacBook was fine, but the iMac is the one that I struggled with. I would type something and it wouldn't come up on the screen right away. So I was a little hesitant for like a day or so, but it eventually just went away and now I can just press one or two, switch between the computers without any or much effort for that matter. We talked a little bit about this earlier, but the keyboard does not need batteries since it is rechargeable. The charging cord is included and it uses USB-C to connect to the keyboard and USB-A to connect to the computer or a power source. And when you plug it in and start charging it, the battery indicator starts flashing and then the backlight comes on and it stays on. And what I love about this is that I can use the keyboard while it's charging. So I still have that simplicity that I have with the Magic Keyboard from Apple, plugging it in, charging it, and still being able to do my work. Now Logitech claims that the keyboard can go for up to 10 days without charging while using the backlight. And without using it, you can go up to five months without a charge. Now obviously, like any statistics regarding battery life on electronics, always take it with a, with a grain of salt and remember that it depends heavily on the use that you give it. Now regarding accessories for the keyboard, you do have the palm rest, which as we mentioned earlier, comes at an additional cost. And at first I thought I was gonna return the palm rest. I wanted my $20 back and I figured that while editing, I don't really need it since I have one hand on the keyboard and another one on the mouse. But it wasn't until I started doing homework and obviously the research for the videos that I realized that the palm rest comes actually pretty handy. The keyboard has a really odd shape and positioning where it's really thin and flat on the desk. So it leaves your wrist in a really odd position, making the palm wrist a helpful accessory for it. Logitech has plenty of options for keyboards out there, mostly with the USB adapter. But if you're looking for something like this one at a flagship level, you do have the Kraft keyboard that they offer as part of their MX series as well. I don't want to go too much into detail, but that's a $200 keyboard with a knob that you can adjust to different programs like Photoshop or Word and you have quick access to your most used tools, but the shape of the keyboard, the aesthetic of it, the look of it, is the same as this one. But anyway, some final thoughts on the keyboard that I actually feature on this video. The keys feel great and it gives me a more confident typing experience. I've never been great at typing, but 
with the keyboard I feel a little more comfortable. I definitely love the spherical shape on the keys. Also having the command key specific to Apple computers is very very helpful to me and it doesn't force me to give up the experience that I had while typing and editing on the new keyboard. And something that I've loved about this experience is the connectivity and the options that Logitech gives you not only with this but other products. It's very impressive to me and as a customer slash user it's very appreciated that Logitech takes the time to give you these features. And it's not all perfect, right? There were a couple of hiccups when connecting to the iMac and back to the MacBook Pro. I'm still learning how to use the Logitech Options program because I really don't know how to use it. But anyways, guys, that was it for today's video. I really, really hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to keep on watching more technology unboxings. I almost said sneaker unboxings because I was thinking about sneakers but I didn't say it. And yeah, one more time, that was it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing. Pablo, out.